Hi and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on identify CPU slash memory intensive processes and kill processes. So the first thing to discuss is what is a process. So a process is any application that's running uh, in the background or even in the foreground um, and obviously and some applications will will run and require a lot more uh, resources, so like CPU, memory, or even disk usage, for example. So um, within uh, a good example of a, an application we're going to discuss now is TOP. Uh, that's T-O-P. And this is pretty much the equivalent of Task Manager in Windows. And if we type that in, you can see a quick summary of everything that's running and you can see so if we just go from the top here so we've just got the, how long the system's been up how many users the current load averages we've got how many tasks are running in total how many are actually actively running how many are sleeping stopped and zombie means that like crashed uh, CPU how much user system uh, etc there um, and you've got the memory, total memory, how much free and how much used. And you've got some buffer and caches there. And then you've got your swap memory, how much used and how much free. And then in here, you've got your PID, which is the process identification number. So that's for every process, there's a unique ID. Uh, and that allows you to then query that process, for example. Uh, you've got the user. That's pretty obvious what that is. That's uh, the current user the running that process. You've got, then got the priority. That's the priority of the task. So you can see some high, high priority and lower priorities. So zero means lower and then 20 means very high. You've got a uh, NI or nice value. Uh, so a nice essentially is how nice the <laughs> the process is to other processes. So uh, a lower nice value generally means it's high priority, so it will push everything out of the way and try and run as quickly as possible. So the lowest value is minus 20, and then you've got a positive value that's very nice and allows everything else to run in front of it, and that can be up to uh, a plus 20. So you can see there's some, look, you've got a plus 19 here, and you've got a minus 20 there for some very important uh, processes. Uh, you've got vert, which is the virtual memory it's currently using. Okay, you've got CPU usage currently, and you've got memory usage there, um, and you've got the time it's been running, so that's the same as CPU time. CPU time, but it gives you more granularity to 100 for a second time it's running, and the command it's actually running. So we can use the shift and the arrows, so that's the, it's normally on most keyboards uh, on the comma and the full stop. So you can use those to actually scroll through. So if you can see my display is updating. So I'm currently uh, sorting the command. Now I'm doing it on time, the greatest time. Now the greatest memory usage. Now the greatest CPU usage currently. And you can see, yeah, it's quite a nice way to, to, to view it. I think especially doing CPU and memory usage is quite useful. And you can keep that view live and just leave that running, you can see what's currently a uh, high CPU. So if you want a bit more information on the processes, if we just click Q, so if we want to do a snapshot of all current processes, we can use the PS. So it's, the, it's a good pro application just to print process information. And if we do minus EF, that will give us a snapshot of all current processes. And you can see it's a direct snapshot of that current time. So you can see it's a very very long list it also gives you a lot of good information who's currently running it the PID ID and also the command is running so you can see like system ND etc so you can see all the all the PIDs and all the users that are currently running it so you can see the PID com column was that second one here okay that's cool so if you want to do it for a particular user so you can do the, pretty much the same thing here so PS minus u and then the user. So let's just do my user here. So you can see what's currently running under my user. 
Um, you can also do, if we just do a clear again, because it's getting a bit messy here, we do a, as much as sudo uh, ps minus u, capital U, root, and then minus u lowercase root, and then u. And this will show the real and effective permissions. So if we do this, it's going to show all the applications that are running as root, but also the actual root user. So it might be the effective permission of that uh, uh, application that's been running, or the process that's running, is running as root, but not actually executed by a root user. So you're going to see everything here. It's a quite good view to see stuff that's actually being executed as root rather than um, as the root user, uh, the root user executing. If you if you catch my drift, so you can do. Say if we're looking for a particular application, we can do the usual uh, grep. So if we just do a, oops, do a clear here, and we do the same ps minus ef, and then do grep, and for example, we just do audit d, and we can see here there's an audit d application, and that is our PID. 757. Okay, cool. But we've got there's multiple ways of doing this. So there's that method. There's also a pgrep, and we can just type audit d, and that will just return. So we've got k audit d, so it's kind of a double match there. So we've got the s bin audit d. It's what I'm looking for. Uh, we've done the. We can just do that pgrep again. That has the same function we can do by user. So C England and then minus L and again we can see it's just a different way of displaying the same information. It's quite good. You can do a negative which is quite nice. So you can do P grep minus V minus U and we can say my user for example minus L and that will be an an inverse search. So anything that's not running as my user will be shown here. So this is all the ones that are not running as me. Cool. So the next part they want you to cover is um, the option of killing processes. So there are two. Uh, there are generally three most used uh, kill messages. So there's different levels essentially. Um, the highest level we we shouldn't really use in most cases, unless the application really isn't responding to any other of the kill uh, requests is uh, kill minus nine and that is literally it will just kill it whatever it's doing it will just completely stop what it's running so obviously if it's writing to a file your immediate immediate data loss for example so it's it's really last case scenario uh, worst case scenario you should be using this almost in an emergency uh, you've got the kill minus 15 which is generally uh, the most used one um, and that's what you use by default if you just type kill and then the process ID uh, that was that will be what it uses the minus 15, and the minus one's like a in between nine and 15. It's like a a next level from uh, the standard 15 to a little bit higher. Is is normally minus uh, is normally one. So I can just do a quick summary of all the different ones. So you can do kill minus L, and you've got all the different ones. So this is the ones I mentioned. So seek uh, hub or hang up, and there's Seek kill, which is that the one I mentioned, the really, uh, really <laughs> serious kill, and the seek terms or terminate. Okay. So how do we kill a process? So first thing, let's again we can get the, uh, the PID. So we can do PID of, and then audit D. So is that seven five seven? Awesome. So now we can do kill, and then the PID ID, so 757. Because I'm not sudo, I can't do that. So now it's killed. So if I do PID of audit D now, there's no PID. So you can definitely see it's killed. So if I uh, system CTR start audit D, That should now start it back up. So we can do a PID of audit D again, and we've got a new PID. Okay, so now there's also a nice thing more recently is a P kill, and you can do P kill audit D, 
operation not permitted again. I am not sudo, so please remember sudo. And if we do again pid of, it's again gone. So that's there's two options there. Um, generally, back in the days, this is what I mostly use: seven, uh, just kill and then the pid ID. So I either get the pid from um, ps minus ef and then grabbing the uh, the process name and then getting the PID ID that way or we uh, more recently you can use the PID of which is quite nice uh, to get the, the PID and then just do kill um, 757 or kill the PID ID so as I did mention you can do the the more aggressive me methods if you got kill minus one and you can just say uh, the process ID so 3416 for example and then you've got the uh, the most aggressive one, kill minus nine, which will literally uh, completely kill the uh, the application, whatever it's doing at the time. So it won't stop anyway nicely. Oh, and the final one about the processes, if I just do this, if we just do a PS minus EDF, we get, uh, this is just in case you want a, a more uh, verbose view and this will just give you more uh, the actual uh, more information about the process so you can you get into stuff like uh, all the details on the command so you got like all the flags there you can see it's a lot more detailed to ac actually how it's working rather than just the oh this application is running it's actually got this application and all the uh, extra executables that are included in that as well so as I mentioned earlier, there's the, there's the niceness um, as such that uh, a negative nice number is less nice than a positive number. Uh, so you can, applications can be, when when they execute, they can be set with a nice value. So if you set something like, say, like minus 20, which is the, the most uh, the least nice uh, value, then the application will run and and will ignore every other process and try and run as fast as it can to complete whatever uh, execution it requires. Um, so a most nice number, or 20 for example, plus 20 for example, will it will run and it will just allow any other application that's got a, a lower nice number to run ahead of it. So if you've got something that can run in the background, perhaps a backup during the day or something, and you don't want it to interrupt um, BAU work, you can maybe set the backup to run as a lower nice number, and it can run in the background without affecting what's currently going on, uh, perhaps the production web server, for example. So you can run um, applications that with a nice value. Um, so to do that, you just set nice, and then minus N for the the nice value and you just set the value number so we can say 10 for example and then you just run I don't know script for example let's just have a look what we got we've got anything here yeah scripts.sh okay so that will run it with a nice value of, of uh, 10 and uh, I might have to sudo that because yep so that will literally run that application with a, a val nice value of 10 to change the nice of a currently running uh, process, we use the renice. So let's just find, um, I think it's vbox. It's like that. Yep. Nope. Vbox. Here we go. Okay. So let's just do virtualbox. Let's do virtualbox client this one. And okay. So the pid is this. Okay. Right, so then we do renice, and we have to sudo renice plus five, so increase the niceness value by five, and then the PID value. So the old priority was zero, the new priority is five. So after we run that, uh, after we run a renice, we can now check the nice value in top. So we just run top again, okay, and we can see the we got the, that nice column as we mentioned earlier. So if we do L for locate and just type in V box, and we can then use the ampersand 
symbol or the and low uh, symbol and just keep pressing that we should find all instances of it we should find the one instance where we've got it at a nice value of five if i can find it if it's here somewhere oh here it is so there's obviously quite a lot of uh, vbox clients in this case but this particular one you can see is now running with a nice value of five because i've just run it as with a plus five nice so you can see there's the original other ones so we've got zero 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 and they've got this one with a nice value of five okay so that pretty much concludes the video as, as always uh, thanks for watching um, please uh, like my video if you found it helpful subscribe to my channel uh, if you if you want to um, please hit the, the bell icon to get notified of any videos yep thanks again much for, for watching and I'll catch you in the next video thank you cheers